my list um, simply because of how many times I've read this book, how many times I've seen me come on for the BBC version. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just, it had to be said. Hey, watch it. Um, I mean, you know, those, those, those images and, and the music and the way that they move and the way that they say things just get so ingrained in you. You know, especially as an actor, I'm trained to remember dialogue, so I've seen the movie three times, therefore I know pieces of it by heart. And then coming into this with this group of people who are all fabulous and different than every, anything I've seen or read before, it was a real jolt for me to break out of it and make it real without making it a caricature of someone else's performance. So, that was tough. Yep, and I'm going, I know, yep, Nick Pullman, have a word to say? This is something just because I mean, for me, probably a, a big challenge was playing Cyril on the Bears, right? Which is just uh, a challenge for its immensity, its length. But, having said that, um, if a part is really, really well written, then all you need is the stamina to hook your wagon to the thing and it takes you where you need to go. I'm not saying it's, it makes it easier, but in a way, it, it's its own roadmap. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just have to have a breath. Awesome. You know, I do. I do. It happened a lot more to me in the very beginning of our rehearsal process when I wasn't totally on my feet with the lines for this and out of instinct or fear or whatever, I would go back to what I knew, which was the film. Um, but there's one line in the middle of your letter. Uh, Nick, um, but I, um, I can't help but revenging himself. I can't help but revenging himself on me. He was a strong inducement or something. Um, but before that, you say, "Thither also went Mr. Wickham to London." And there's a line in the book, in the movie, and I don't know why this sticks out, but Colin Firth says, "Undoubtedly, what he did design." And every time he starts that letter, I'm like, "That's the line's not in here," so I can't react to it because he's an like, saint. <laughs> see, you see, it's a catch twenty-two. <laughs> But what's great is, the other went is still Wickham, that my line comes next, and now it's going to throw me when we do the next show. How do we decide what accent we're going to use and how do we go about learning it? Very tough for me. Um, obviously, I'm English, so it's very easy for me. So, seeing as we're kind of wrapping it up here with this question, we'll just go down the line and we'll answer the accent question. Obviously, I'm from England, so it was, uh, it was very easy for me, and it's just a matter of doing. Um, you know, the, finding the right tonality for the three characters. Mr. Collins is obviously quite a slimy guy, so things are quite easy. Wickham is very brave, and, or comes off as brave as a soldier, he's gallant, he's a, he's a cat, or a bounty, I don't know what word we use. So that was very easy. And Mr. Bigley's a soft, nice hearted, friendly guy, so that's how I found the voices, but being English is very easy. Go down there. Um, well, being from New England, there are certain words I would say aunt, not aunt. So there are certain things that were just sort of easy for me. And then I uh, have a girlfriend who's uh, a Brit, and I asked her, actually, I said, you know, would you go through this and just help me, you know, pinpoint some of the words that are different, like cordiality. We would say cordial, right? But they, they don't. So things like that. My girlfriend just helped me sort of go through so that when I showed up with the Brits, I wouldn't embarrass myself too badly. <laughs> but then they helped, they coached. Um, I get well, I obviously don't have an accent. I went to school and we studied classical speech, but I actually never did accents, sorry. And I guess, I mean, same thing sort of as Diane. I, I worked on it with people who had accents, and then I got here and had three lovely people with real accents that love to correct. <laughs> In a very kind way, so that's what I did. Well, you know, I, Again, I'm English, but for me, if we were doing this in England with all English actors, I would, for my two roles, Lydia, all of the Bennets would be much more country, and I'm from the southwest, which is much more country you know, but um, it would be part much more, but it would be more, it would be a different class, and it would be a different sound than uh, Caroline Bini, who, you know, is much more upper class, based in London, you know, doesn't like going to the country. Not based in London, spends a lot of time in London. So, but because of the context, we never really got that specific. So for me, it wasn't about you know doing a different accent for both of them. It was about having a different uh, sensibility. Um, 
Um, I think that the key for me, uh, and the, the accent that I do, please correct me if I'm incorrect about this. Correct me if I'm incorrect. 30 points for me. Um, uh, is what's called received pronunciation. It's RP. It's sort of your standard when you're looking for a British dialect. It's kind of the first place to start. Um, unless you want to get more regionally specific, like Hertfordshire or North of England is, is a very different sound, and Midlands is very different than West, and, but we don't need to get as specific here unless you're in like Nick Horman and you're playing five characters as a play. Um, so mine really was just a question of practicing and beating up the words I couldn't get until they sounded correct. And I grew up with uh, the fortune uh, of having a, a mother from England, so uh, sort of didn't hear any accent. Shameless compliment. Shameless compliment. 